Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Medina and I have the huge pleasure of inviting you to have breakfast with me and one of my favorite people, my father, Manny Medina, the visionary behind Emerge America's Tech League. Almost exactly two years ago, you had sold Terramark to Verizon several months before and you decided to plan this family vacation to the Keys where you were going to relax, unwind and I remember that trip vividly because I remember you being extremely pensive more than usual, constantly walking around with this notebook, jotting notes, doodling, reading more than usual and everyone thought you were in the Keys, relaxing, retiring, scuba diving, fishing. And although you were doing some of that, I remember knowing that something was cooking up there. You mentioned to me that you were frustrated with going to these technology conferences outside of Miami when you worked for Terramark and all the potential that Miami had and that you really wanted to do something big to give back to the community. And that's the first time you ever mentioned to me the idea of the technology conference. I remember thinking that you were a bit crazy to try to do something like this because we're not in the event planning business. But I also remember thinking how brilliant. Pops, how has the vision changed since you told it to me two years ago to today? Well, first of all, you know, I was relaxing and this is a very relaxing endeavor, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, super relaxing. So the whole idea was bringing innovation and the legacy companies, the IBM, the Oracle, the Microsoft, Cisco, so the world together. Uh, at the same time, uh, what is happening now is that it's expanded. For example, we're getting the Mayoral Summit uh, going. We're getting FDE, which is basically a very important part of this, is getting the young students, the high school age students uh, involved, so getting them to compete. We got the hackathon, we got the best in class for both later stage companies, earlier stage companies. We have the STEM uh, with the robot uh, face off. Uh, we never really was planning to have a fashion show mm -hmm. <laughs> as, part of the, uh, as part of the Emerge America. So, so the whole scope of it. Uh, has morphed. Has morphed into a much bigger mm -hmm. uh, undertaking, which of course just made it just a tad mm -hmm. difficult for us to be able to, uh, uh, to control this. So we're about to showcase Emerge Americas to the world tomorrow. I know your schedule's crazy, we're all hectic today, but I want to know, what are your top two priorities today on your to-do list? One of the priorities is that as, as, the, um, as the event gets to the last final days, we, we've been so blessed that have so many important people from around the world are coming mm -hmm. that my own person and a lot of them are personal friends and people that I've leveraged my personal relationship with them to get them here mm -hmm. and being this the first year. So one of my priorities is making sure that logistically they're all being taken care of. Their, their speaking slots are right, you know, their accommodations, things as mundane as that because it's very, very important. I feel personally indebted to them. Look, the overall driving factor, as you said in your original comment, is helping Miami diversify its economic base. Miami traditionally has been a, 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 an economy of boom and bust. As you know, we went through a couple of boom and mm -hmm. busts ourselves, right? So the whole idea is that rather than be so dependent on construction, on condominium sales, nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. uh, dependent on tourism, on fickle businesses, as I like to call them, is to create an embedded economic base, which is what technology brings to you. If you eventually have technology companies establishing themselves here, employing people here, selling their wares here, people will be traveling here for technology purposes. So the whole number one event is technology as a driving factor to our economy. And I think that uh, that Emerge could be that that spark. Mm -hmm. There's so much else going on already with folks doing startups and things like that, that Emerge will be that spark. That from there you can jump into having, for example, a technology zone. Uh, one of the ideas is to create an innovation center of the Americas, where you bring in people to house uh, uh, young entrepreneurs in the same building. You have uh, offices, you have labs, you have a data center, all in one. So the, you know, innovation, so the innovation center of the Americas could be an initial project. So if you think about Emerge, Several thousand of the brightest minds, most important technology people, converging into our city for the first time, thinking Miami technology, Miami technology, and that, and you know, and you start, with, you have to start whatever you change. You have to start with a mindset. You have to change that mindset, and that's what I found earlier. That the mindset of Miami, I would find my colleagues and my peers uh, uh, when I had Terramark, and they would think Miami, good time, Miami, <laughs> party, <LB. laughs> Miami, party never Miami technology and that frustrated me. So I think that's where it starts and I think that what Emerge will do is create that 
this course and who knows where it's going to end. Are you happy with what we're creating? Um, you know, this is the first year, so I'm happy where we are now. I think at the end of the day we will know May 7th and hopefully it will be a smashing success because I think it will be a lot easier to build from a base for 2015 than it is from zero to the base, right? And that's uh, so, and uh, like I'd like to say, I have uh, 10 minutes of acceleration and 10 minutes of fear. <laughs> what would you say is the most important aspect of your long-term vision for the Technology Foundation of the Americas? So you've heard me say many times you win a war one battle at a time, so the number one battle right now is really concentrate on making it emerge every, every sound and success. Mm -hmm. uh, long term, it takes, it's going to be a big effort to transform. If we want to be serious about transforming uh, our economy to more of a technology-based economy, it involves improving our educational system all the way from K to 12 to the uh, higher uh, education universities. You need to get more uh, innovators, I mean incubators and accelerators uh, formed. You need to have more funding sources and ultimately you need to establish an employment base here for technology. All of those uh, endeavors would take a significant amount of time and effort and we would like to see the Technology Foundation of the Americas be one of those driving forces that makes that happen. Is there anything that stands out to you that you can think of that would not make Miami the right city to have a technology hub? No. <laughs> Come on, no. something. <laughs> I mean, what else? We got the geography, we got the people, we got the infrastructure, we got the connectivity, you know, we got the, the, the multicultural. I mean, we have really, really smart people. We have incredible talent in Latin America, as I've experienced myself. So is there, we are a great party town, mm -hmm. you know, and that really attracts people. <laughs> so, I mean, is there anything else that we need? No. Yeah, I think we'll be, we'll be just uh, uh, glutton to see if we need that <laughs> or anything else. Right? So, I happen to agree with you. I yeah. just wanted to push your buttons a little bit. So I know a lot of your personality traits. However, what would you say are the personality traits that have gotten you to where you are today? One of the ones is, um, without a doubt, is perseverance. You know, just really having a vision. And sometimes, like you said, people accuse you of being crazy and mm -hmm. you, know, you really believe in your vision. You believe in what you're doing. Uh, you just persevere and, you know, it's really very, very, uh, difficult sometimes because you're really, really going over overwhelming odds as you know in my life since I came here and uh, and that's the, uh, the uh, number one trait uh, uh, you know I think another thing that is very important is to just create a reputation for uh, keeping your word and being straightforward uh, that well, when you say to somebody you're gonna do something you do it right and you know you know how I know I am about being on time that creates, you know, I always say, when I speak to young kids, I mean, as you know, I do this a lot, I always tell them, think of yourself as a brand, right? And why do you why do you buy a brand? Why do you want to buy Mercedes versus Chevrolet? Or why do you want to buy a certain product? Because as a brand, you create trust. And I think that's what you need to do, is create people to trust you. And you only do that by being reliable, keeping your word, sometimes at great expense, mm -hmm. right? And that's really, those are the two main that I tell young kids is persevere and, and create yourself as a trustworthy individual because when you are trustworthy people bring you stuff people believe in you people back you people say yeah he's gonna do what he says he's gonna do I mean Emerge is a perfect example I mean with, I've been so blessed and I've had so many naysayers and who knows right I mean we're gonna know May 7th no we yeah. know it's gonna be successful no, but we're gonna know May 7th yeah. I mean, it, really that's the way it is right but May 7th in the meantime along the way I've had all these naysayers and I've had all these people saying, you know, you can never do this, you can never bring this, you know, blah, 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 and that's okay. How much do you enjoy having your daughter working with you? <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's kind of like I was saying before, 10 minutes of fear and 10 minutes of consideration. <laughs> <laughs> that basically is the, uh, you know, look, I think one of the greatest joys is uh, for you to be an integral part of this effort. Uh, I enjoy very much having seen you dedicate yourself into the effort and come up with some great ideas. I mean, and come up with some creative ideas and really uh, contribute in every aspect of, uh, of the event for this first year. So I think it's a, it's a, uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been year. really exciting for me too. What improvements or changes do you hope Emerge brings to Miami? Look, I think as I said, next week alone doesn't do it. But if next week is successful, and I think if you move forward and you look at Miami 10 years from now, 
what I envision seeing is exactly what the long Silicon Valley corridor looks like, right? Not just Miami, all the way from Palm Beach down here, where you have companies establishing themselves, you have more innovation, and our economy will be significantly diversified into a whole new area that doesn't exist today, based on that. And I think the most important uh, advantage that we have for that, and the most important thing that needs to happen is we need to become Latin America's technology hub, focus. We need to get the bright people from Latin America that have all the startups begin thinking, I want to bring my company to Miami. Right now, the reality is that they want to bring it to Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. And if you're a young Brazilian or a young Colombian and a young Peruvian or a young uh, anywhere from Latin America, and all this talent, when you create this, your first thought is not, I'm going to bring my company to Miami. I'm going to bring my company to Silicon Valley. I'm going to bring it to uh, Atlanta. And that th I think that's what hopefully uh, uh, will happen. What's your next big idea? Or are you retiring? Nah, <laughs> Ever? I don't believe in retirement. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dad, thanks for having breakfast with me. I know this is a crazy day for both of us. And to take time out of your day in the morning and share this special moment with you is awesome. We should do it more often. <laughs>